All right, welcome to our team call tonight. Thanks for making time to be on. I know sometimes it's hard to make time and if you're busy, you um, can't get on these calls or if you're in a different time zone, but I appreciate you guys being on the call. But again, we'll record these, make sure that we repost them. Um, and you can come back and look at them or listen to them um, if you ever need to. So first off, um, just a reminder, tickets for a convention should be coming soon. So be sure to be prepared, make sure that you're watching for those. I will be sure to post on our team page first thing when I find out. So make sure you guys that your notifications are on on our team page. If they're not, then you might not be seeing important information come up um, right as it's being announced. Um, so make sure that you have that set and that you're ready to purchase your tickets. Um, I hope that all of you are planning to go. Um, I think most all of you that are on this call, I think I've talked to and are planning to go, which I'm excited for. Um, if you haven't decided yet, hurry and decide. <laughs> um, and if you can get your significant other to go as well, it would be an awesome experience for them. Um, I feel like it's such a different thing to have your your significant other on board with you and to kind of see the vision that you see. And so um, if that's a possibility, that would be awesome. And hopefully um, for those of us who maybe are, are coming without a significant other, we can all room together or we can all, even those of us who do have our husbands or you know boyfriends coming with that we um, can get a block of rooms hopefully together. We'll try to, we'll try to make that happen. But in any case, those of us who are there, we'll, we'll be sure to stick together and have fun. So, okay. Um, well, we have a guest at our house today. Welcome, Carla. Hey, Carla. <laughs> Carla's visiting today. We've been having fun just chatting. Carla won the iPad, so we're getting her all set up on her iPad. So, um, Anyways, we've been just talking. You guys, everybody, I want to just say how proud I am of all of you for working so hard. I know that even if you didn't hit the 100 pieces, I have seen all of you just working really hard, really um, working your business and trying to trying to do it better. Um, <laughs> there it is, the iPad. Um, Woo <laughs> Okay, but I, I do want to always have something to motivate you each month because I know that's a huge factor in sometimes why we why we reach certain goals. So um, we will have a new challenge coming up this month. Um, I will post the details for it this week, uh, but I need to get those for sure set before I announce it. Okay, um, does anybody have any good news about? this past week some anything that's happened this past week that they want to share or um, something good that's happened in your business I would love to hear oh good Vanessa's on right. Emily's on I'll share something yes please yes. I quit my job Woo! Holy cow. super liberating I have so much less stress, and I can concentrate fully on Lularo now. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Good for you. And that's huge. <laughs> Are you scared? Tell us how you're feeling right now. To say it out loud, it freaks me out even more. Like it was hard enough to do it, but to tell people that I've done it, they're like, what are you going to do? You've been a nurse all these years. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It kind of gives me a good lead into why I do what I do, what I'm doing it for. Um, and they're like, wow, that's amazing. So. Awesome. I love that. I love how you kind of turned it into an uh, opportunity to share the business a little bit. Super proud of you. That's a huge step. Um, and we talked about eating that frog and that's one of those, like, that's a huge frog to eat, you know, but, but that's something hopefully, you know, will excel your business and, you know, shoot, like skyrocket it, um, because you're going to have that time to put into it, you know, so that's exciting. Thanks for sharing Pulani. 
Anybody else want to share any good news? Let's see. We had some comments here. here. Woohoo, congrats, Kulani, and awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And that that yeah. goes, you know, not everybody's gonna want to quit their job, and that's totally fine. And that's where Kulani's at, and she's, you know, she's ready to invest full time in the business, but but not everybody's there, and so we we all have our own goals. So, you know, that not everybody needs to quit their job and and do the same thing. Everywhere that we are at is okay, and you know, is good for good for us. All right, any any other good news you guys want to share? I got something. Yeah. Um, so the last couple months have been trialing for me. I've been going through a lot of medical problems, and we're not sure what's going on yet. <laughs> we're still a lot of tests, but uh, I kind of had my aha moment this last week, and. Um, you know, my little, I'm feeling sorry for myself. I, I finally said no more, no more. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to push through it. And I love this job. I love what I do and I do it for a reason. And uh, I need to just run with it. No more holding myself back because that's what happens a lot is I'll start moving forward and then I'm, I just get, you know, and I kind of like pull myself back. And, you know, I was talking to my husband the other day, I said, no more, you know, I gotta, I gotta do for me, but I gotta do for others too. And so that's my goal is to, you know, push myself forward or work harder in the, in the business. Awesome. That's amazing, Misty. I know that you've been going through those struggles and, and we all go through struggles at times. And I've been there. I've been there where you, you kind of get in your own way sometimes. Um, you know, and you feel like, you know, maybe I can't do it. Um, so I'm so proud of you for wanting to push forward. And that's all it takes really is that that choice and that determination to just push forward sometimes. So Thanks so much for sharing this. Awesome. Anybody else want to share? Some good news? Less I got I got a happy one. Okay. I hit my year mark. I've been a consultant for a year now. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> one year old. One year. <laughs> Crazy. That went by so fast. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Crazy. Awesome. Congratulations. That's exciting. Thanks. Hey, okay. anybody else want to share? I share. <laughs> what do you want to share? I share. I'm going to share it. <laughs> You're silly. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for those who shared. Um, you guys, don't be afraid to share your successes. We like to hear them. I think it's uplifting to those on our team as well. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move forward. And I want to introduce to you Lulabro Mike. <laughs> um, a little bit about Mike is he actually, um, when he was very, very young, he started, he started his career in sales. <laughs> He, his parents owned his parents owned a, a gun store when he was very young, um, and he he would go to the gun store and he would go and sell. And um, he worked. He was a hard worker. He I when I first you know met him and when, as I dated him, I could tell he was a hard he he was he always had his job and he also went to school at the same time. Uh, we were both at BYU, but he was working at the same time at the gun store and. I know he had a really good work ethic, um, but he's had a lot of years worth of sales experience. And so um, I asked him if he could share his sales tips. And also, um, just recently, he started selling on Periscope. He started his own Periscope, and he um, he's done three sales so far. And I wanted him to share they were two. All amazing. Just, they were all amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I wanted him to share his experience so far with Periscope and what he's learned so far um, selling 
live. Um, so I'll just, I'll let him take over. What an introduction. Here. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks. So like Jenny said, I've, I've spent um, basically my whole life doing some kind of sales, um, something or other, right? So I started at the gun store, um, helping the family out at very young age. I think I remember selling the first gun that I sold, and some people might freak out about this, but like when I was 11 years old, I remember helping a customer to buy a gun. And of course, you know, somebody else took care of all the legal stuff, but I, I helped them decide on that purchase, right? So that's how far it goes back for me. And so, you know, typically at the gun store, it was, you know, low to semi-expensive in terms of dollar sales, right? It could be a $20 sale for a box of ammo or a holster or, you know, a $1,000 or $2,000 gun. And then um, I started working at GE about five years ago where that shifted dramatically in the type of sales and also the dollar amount. So now, you know, I'm responsible for about a million dollars in sales every month and it's a much more technical sale and there's a lot more strategy to it. So I've kind of seen both sides of the coin and um, kind of the things that I've taken away from that, that that matter most for this type of sales. And um, I just wanted to kind of share those kind of things. And I, I feel like my time at the gun store um, was actually very similar to the type of sales that we do at LuLaRoe at least it, um, in being successful at them. So I need two volunteers. I need somebody to tell me about a really, really bad sales experience they had, at least from a buyer's perspective, and then a really, really good. Do we have anybody that could share a couple quick stories about having a really bad experience purchasing something and a really good experience in purchasing something? Searching something? Yes, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Any volunteers? <laughs> oh, my dear. Speak up, speak up. you guys remember up. those bad experiences that I you had? I know you all have. Speak <laughs> up. No one? No bad experiences? No. Okay, Carla's going to tell I'm us a bad experience. I'm trying to speak up, so don't know. Oh, yeah. Carla has a bad experience. Okay, so I, yeah. I worked at Tuesday morning at the hotel store for about eight years, and um, I had some coworkers, and so some of them were not really on their game, I guess you'd say. But people would come in looking for something, and they were like, well, I think it's on aisle eight. And they just stand there and send the customer to the aisle. Instead of you know saying, hey, let me show you where that's at. Um, let me take you to where it is. Um, and they would just let the customer look for it. Well, pretty soon the customer just ends up walking out of the store because they're not getting what they're getting. You know, and so some of us would intervene because the, you know, the salesperson wouldn't go help them. So then we would have to go and, and show it was so that they would actually make that purchase. So just not caring. Not, not a lot of caring, not a lot of attention, right? Right. Thanks, Carla. Anybody else have anything they want to share along those lines? Anything really good? Hmm. What about you, honey? A good experience. Okay, well, I'll share, and, and I'll share maybe in generalities, but um, I always think about buying cars, right? Because buying cars is usually a pain in the butt, and it's usually a painful experience. It's not always, um, but it can be. And I think a lot of that is because of the pressure involved in those sales and kind of the, uh, the, the high-pressure strategy that goes into that, right? And there could be some technical sales aspect, but I feel like most of the time, the car sales people, in, unless you're buying a brand new car, they may not have a clue what they're talking about. So they're just telling you whatever they think, you know, they think you're gonna latch onto or whatever. And then it's always very pushy, you know, what's it gonna take to get you to buy this? What's it gonna take to get you to take this thing home right now? And, and those types of sales, right? Where it's very pushy, it's very high pressure. There is a strategy involved, but you never really feel good about it. You kind of feel like, ugh, you know, like you're just sitting there hating it the whole time. And then on the other side where you might have a good experience, like Jenny and I were actually out car shopping a couple weeks ago. Costco yeah, doesn't right. Anything without question. Okay, so yeah. Jenny and I were out car shopping a couple weeks That's ago, and we actually had a couple guys that were really amazingly nice to us. Mm -hmm. um, this one place we looked at, the guy just – hey, what are you looking for? Just really down to earth, just very friendly, 
okay, well, you should, you know what, you guys, maybe you should check, check this one out too. Here, I'll just give you the keys to both of them and just go check them out and, and see what you think, right? And then he's like, here's the license plate, you know, just go whatever, just bring him back whenever. Totally cool, no pressure. We came back. He's like, yeah, that's great, you know. You know, we really like this one because it's got a little bit more room in the back seat. We think, you know, you guys have kids, you probably enjoy that a little bit more. And you know what, I noticed that one didn't have the um, video monitors in the back seat. That's something we could probably do for you guys if you're interested in that. But no worries, there was no pressure whatsoever. He was just very nice, he gave us his card, and he was just seemed like he was willing to, to take care of us, but never, uh, it could have been like this. Hey, if you guys want to take that home tonight, I'll get some video monitors put in there. You know, he, there was no pitch, like hard pitch proposal or anything like that. It was just, hey, I, you know, I want to get you guys taken care of. That kind of thing where we felt more appreciated as customers, right? So kind of what I wanted to get across from this perspective, and I was hoping you guys had had some really bad ones. I know, but, but I want you to think, we probably all have, right? We've probably all been in that experience in buying something where a salesperson has been very rehearsed, very well trained. Uh, they may have a script if you've ever had like a, a telephone sales thing, and they suck, right? They might be the best at their company in delivering that script or that strategy, but in a lot of cases it doesn't work, and that's because there's no emotion, enthusiasm, or like Carla mentioned, there's no caring involved in that, right? It's just a go by the book, follow this strategy, and it'll maybe work, right? So what I want us to take away from that and what I learned at the gun store what it, what, is that it wasn't really about the, uh, oh, Chantel, okay, so. Comcast has the worst customer service. Yes. The follow through is key. Yeah, so I should, I, we had two notes here. Chantel said that uh, Comcast customer service is the worst because they don't follow up. Right, because and that's another thing means we don't care if we don't follow up, right? And then um, Emily mentioned that Chelsea. Costco. Oh, Chelsea. Chelsea mentioned that Costco customer service is amazing because if you go to return something, they don't give you the you know third degree. They just will take it back. They'll just take care of you, right? Mm -hmm. And we like to go to Costco, and that's one reason why we're not afraid to buy things at Costco, and that's one reason why, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> USPS is the worst. They do not answer the phones and long lines. I won't get started on government <laughs> agencies. Um, okay, so what I want you to take away kind of from, from this discussion is, is I think how we sell at pop-ups and how we sell at lives is the one we really care about our customers and we are showing them our friendship first, right? We are showing them, and this, these are all things we do without being pushy, you know, when somebody walks in the door, we greet them. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the party. You know, have you seen LuLaRoe before? Is, the, is there anything I can show you? You know, those kind of things. When, when a lady comes out of the uh, dressing room, Jenny's amazing at this. Oh, you look so cute in that. Or, you know what? I think maybe this one would be a little bit better for you. Let me go grab it and you can try it. You know, those kind of things where she's showing she really cares without saying, why don't you go, go ahead and get that one and then I'll find you this one and this one and those go really good with it. There's never a, like a, you know, a high pressure sales pitch with that. And so what I'm saying is we don't need to be these incredible technical salespeople. What we need to do is just care about our customers and we need to show them that we're friends with them. At the gun store, this was me every day. Like, I'm not, I don't want to brag too much, but I was really, really amazing at selling guns and it's because... I love guns and I was always really excited about those products and when I shared my enthusiasm and my excitement for the product just like we have about LuLaRoe it's so contagious for people they latch onto it when I am talking to somebody about how amazing I think this product is and how I love it and how I've tried it before and it's so much fun and I wish I could have five of them whatever you know like that's contagious and it's also true Right? I'm not making anything up. I'm not giving them this rehearsed pitch. It's just who I am. Right? And that's how we can all be about Lou and Roe, is we're sharing our love for the clothing. Right? Jenny can tell them, hey, I have this Carly dress, and it's the most comfortable thing I've ever worn, and I wear it 24 hours a day. And I tell that story through Jenny, right? Like, my <laughs> wife has 15 Carly dresses, and she wears them 24 hours a day, you know, whatever. Those kinds of things where it's like, hey, we, you know, we just want to share our love of the product with our customers. 
And that's, that's something that we all can do and can come very naturally to us. I did a training, so I work for GE Healthcare, right, and I do sales of, of service contracts for x-ray equipment. And that's one of the things that was my job was to train some of our service engineers on some of these sales skills. And they were all really stressed out, and I think maybe we get that way too, is that they're like, well, we need sales skills, we need sales skills, you know? And, and they're expecting like, like a pitch, like a rehearsed uh, sales strategy that they can deliver. But it's, again, it's not, that, it's not about that. For, for so many of these things, right? It's about relationship building. It's about caring about our customers. Um, and it's about just sharing our excitement or our enthusiasm for the product. And then another thing um, that I always look for in my job now and also when I was at the gun store, if somebody gets really excited about something, so if somebody comes in and they talk about, you know, how they love how soft the clothes are, right? then you can show them some soft shirts too, right? And, and pick out those ones. There's, you know, the leggings, materials, Irma's and things like that, but you can find it, you can show them as well. So you can take that, hey, these leggings are so soft and you know, I love the way they feel and, and show them another product that's like that as well. You just kind of go after that I found, whatever somebody's excited about, that's the thing that you're talking about. Whatever somebody's into, that's what you're into, you know? Mm -hmm. And that way you're sharing and making that connection with them and helping them, you know, even fuel their excitement and also validating their excitement about something by, by you know, just, just kind of feeding into that. Are you going to relate that to the Periscope sales? Well? Yes, Periscope's coming. Um, the other thing, and this is where I go to Periscope, right? Um, don't be afraid to try new things. So this was for me, right? And so Pulani, you're on here, right? Pulani, do you know you know what a kind of shy person I can be, right? So tell <laughs> tell everyone about what kind of person that you thought or think I or or the kind of person that I am, like at our family parties and stuff. So um, I don't know how many years I knew Mike before I actually heard his voice. <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't talk. He just kind of keeps to himself. If you have something to say like he'll converse with you but he's not really the one to like seek out a conversation and um be the life of the party i guess yes no um, no offense exactly <laughs> that's what I was hoping awesome because i had no idea that he was that sitting back in the corner <laughs> so that, that's exactly who i am like i am totally good talking to people but at a party or something i'm not the one going to meet everybody and you know really excited to to just be friends with everybody and have, you know, conversations about everything, like Pulani said, you know, that's, that's not really my style. But I've learned that in sales, I can't really get away with that, right? I have to kind of get into what I call my sales mode, right? And that's where I become my best sales self, which is where I'm much more open to talking to people. I'm much more excited about things. And, and usually for me, I need something to talk about in order to do that, right? I'm not really good at like small talk, chit chat, that kind of stuff. That's, that's not really up my alley, right? So with Periscope, I, I felt like I had to have something to talk about all the time, right? So I can't just go on Periscope and be like, hey, what's going on? You guys want to <laughs> look at anything? You know, and just sit there and look at the camera. Like that freaks me out. Like I'll just feel like an idiot. <laughs> so I decided when I'd start doing Periscope, that I would always be showing a product. And I, I feel like this really helps a lot because um, like if you go and look at Periscope and you look at the feed, it's taking like a little mini screenshot of you and it updates, I don't, I don't know how long, every 15, 20, 30 seconds, something like that. And it updates and you could get a picture of me like this or you could get a picture of me showing a piece of clothing and talking about it, right? And which video are you more likely to enter if you're a LuLaRoe shopper, right? You're going to go for the one that there's actually product in, mm -hmm. right? Because it's going to feel more inviting. You know something else is going on, so you don't think there's going to be as much pressure from me just, hey, in person, hey, what's going on? Oh, go to my shop. Can I show you anything? You know, like, it's not going to be like me jumping all over you as soon as you get in there, right? Because something else is going on. And, and that's my next tip is that when somebody does come in, you know, to, and this is your Facebook Live, this is your home pop-ups, this is your Periscopes, whatever, 
it's very important that that person be greeted, right? So they do feel welcome. And whatever that is, you know, I just say, hey, loser871, what, you know, I don't know. They have the weirdest names <laughs> on Periscope ever. And uh, so I try to read it off and half the time I get it wrong and they probably laugh too and think that's funny, right? And uh, I just say, hey, what's going on? And, and you know what? A lot of times they say, oh, not much. Or, oh, I'm good. Good, how are you? How are you? What's going on? And, and, and we enter into a conversation that way, right? And sometimes that can mean, you know, we get talking, oh, hey, you know what? I'm just showing this to this person, but you can be next if you like. Let me know if there's something you want to see, right? And so we go from there. But we've opened the door just, just by using that simple greeting. Um, the other thing I noticed on Periscope was, like, I don't want to jade anybody. Like, it's hard. And a couple of us have started in this last week, me and Angela and Amanda. Amanda. And uh, it's not, like, a real easy thing to start up. There's, you know, a lot of uh, competition on there, and customers don't have to join anything immediately. So you have to work hard to build that loyalty with them, right? And so one of those things that I've decided to do when I go on Periscope when I'm working hard is, I stay on there a long time and it like the first one, I think I was like four and a half hours or something. Like it was way long. My feet how were many did we sell? killing me after, but I sold nine pieces on my first sale. I was pumped. I was thinking I was going to sell one or two. Right. <laughs> and so my, my thing that I did was I just went right into showing pieces right away. There was nobody watching for like the first half an hour. Right. And then a couple of people would dribble in, dribble out. A couple of people would come in. But then once three or four people were in there, it seemed to escalate quickly. And then we would get more, right? Because people will go where there's more people because they think something's going on. Um, so that's, that's kind of my take on that is to stay with it. That first one, I think I got 20-something followers out of. So I was pumped, right? And go ahead and ask people, you know, if you like what you're seeing, please follow me. And, you know, you'll get people, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sounds great, you know. Or, hey, I'm getting this new, some more of these. And on Thursday, you know, come follow me and, and you'll see when I have those for you. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll check have back you guys, Have you guys watched Periscope before? Have most of you seen Periscope? I think there are some on her, here who maybe haven't. Haven't? If you haven't, I think most of you actually have. But if you haven't, when somebody actually follows you, that means they'll get a notification once you come back on again, which that's what you want. You want them to be notified every time that you come back on the Periscope so that they're like, they get that little whistle notification and they're like, oh, somebody's on Periscope. Oh, I better see what, what's going on, what's happening. Um, and that's, so that's why you want people to follow you. So again, like Jenny said, once, you know, once people follow you, then they get that notification and then, you know, they might swing back in, they might not. So I've done three sales and I'm up to like 56 followers or something. And I think one of them was like two hours. I don't get any creepers at all. I had any, yes. But I think it's because I'm a guy. Maybe it's because I'm so tough looking. They I don't, think, don't dare mess with me. I don't know, you know. Well, and I think too that um, they go to groups that have maybe more followers too. So the more, cause the more people they can reach or whatever. Um, I think eventually, you know, the more we're on, we're going to, yeah. we're going to have creepers in our group and it's just like the it's nature gone. of it. It's just part of it. So you just block them when they come on, you know, I, I'm there right, right there with Mike when he's selling, um, to help pull items or to help, you know, block people. I can be ready to block people if we need to. Um, cause they will come in. They'll eventually they will. Guys, I was hoping so. they would cause I thought it would be kind of fun <laughs> just to see what people say. I've seen the <laughs> dumbest things in other people's periscopes they, they when I was kind of learning and I just, I laughed myself to tears. So I mean, I'm <laughs> kind of sad that hasn't happened. Um, something else that we learned this week was it's important to put LuLaRoe in your broadcast name and put it at the front. Put LuLaRoe, uh, Carly's, Shop the Box, or whatever. Start it with LuLaRoe, because I think the Periscope feed searches off relevancy, and so it's looking for, you know, where LuLaRoe is in the name of your broadcast. So if you put it, you know, close to the front, then you're more likely to be up at the top if somebody searches for LuLaRoe, and you're more likely to get people to jump into your sale. 
Um, so I mentioned having always something to show, and that's kind of what I've done. But at the same time, I am so able to immediately drop whatever I'm doing if somebody wants to look at something. So if somebody comes in and says, hey, do you guys have any uh, extra small perfects? Yeah, hold on, let me grab those for you. You know, I put down whatever I'm doing, and I just go to that. Because what I'm doing right then, at least for now, isn't really making me any sales. It's just making me look busy like I have something to do. So I'm going to drop those, whatever I'm showing, and I'm going to go get whatever they want. And then we've had it, you know, turn out quickly where we've got a queue going. And it's important to acknowledge that, hey, you know, this person, you're next. Uh, we're going to bring out those Carly's for you, up. you know, and, and just keep them there because it's so easy for people to pop in and out. So you want to keep them as interested and involved as you can. So just let them know, you know, they're coming up next. Um, with that, try and see every comment. And sometimes it's hard, but Periscope, it's boom, it's there for a couple seconds, and then it's gone. So try to keep your eyes on the screen as much as you can and watch for those comments because if somebody makes a request or asks a question, that could easily be a sale if you have their, you know, have their thing, you respond to it properly, or you just take care of them. Yeah. You know, like we had we had good comments on ours and, and people were like, Wow, you guys are you guys have really got it together. How long have you been doing this, you know? And it's because we were paying attention to people. It's because we were, you know, organized in writing people's requests down and stuff like that. And we had a lot of product to show them. So that really helped us to get, you know, a bunch of initial followers. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah, Misty, that's a good question because um, as we started doing Periscope, we've actually had requests for items that we don't carry very many of. And mm -hmm. so like that Lola's and Lucy's and even the men's Madison's shirts. Madison's men's shirts. Like things that we don't normally carry that we don't sell, haven't sold a lot of on Facebook um, or in person, but people are now asking for them. So one of our, like our business decision was to expand our inventory and to, to carry everything because we want to be able to offer any of the styles. We don't want people to come into our group and say, hey, do you have Amelia's? And then we have to say, no, we don't carry those because we've been in so many periscopes where people go in, we're watching the periscope, people will come in and they'll say, hey, do you carry the Amelia dresses? And they'll say, no, we don't carry that style. And then they just leave, you know, and you you know, but I mean, you know, it's, it's going to take you some time you for you to build up what you can. Yep. But as for us, that was our, that was a business decision for us that we wanted to make sure we had. And if you don't want to add new styles, add depth to the styles that you do have. Right. So I have more pieces to show, right. especially with the live and the Periscope, you know, any of the online shoppers, they have access to see a lot of product. So it's more important for you to have a lot, a lot of different ones for them to variety. look at because yeah. the more variety you have, the more likely it is for someone to find something that they like. And in, and in those cases too, where you may not carry a style, instead of saying, no, we don't carry that style, you can, you can say, you know, but I do carry a ton of this style. And let me show you some of those, what size do you wear, you know? So try to turn it around into a positive to where you can show what you have. Because I think, I think a lot of times, if you can get what you have in front of people, you know, that's the key is like sh showing it to them. Then you might have something that I, they actually like. Um, and we have noticed that when you say, you know, can I show you this? People are like, sure. Yeah, I'll take a look at them. Or we just, you know, sometimes I'll even just say, hey, I, I have this awesome, you know, this style. I mean, I'm just going to pull them and show them to you because they're so awesome. Um, sometimes you just need to pull them and show them to people instead of asking them um, because, you know, it's kind of like that yes or no question yes or no, or rather than let's, let's just show them to you and see if you like them. Yep. So, um, yeah, sorry. No worries. That's great. So uh, another thing that I noticed, so Pulani, you were on this sale. Remember my first Facebook live sale that I did? Remember the mannequins <laughs> in the background? How could you forget, right? <laughs> okay. Remember we had mannequins in the background. You remember what happened? Every single piece that I put on a mannequin, and behind me on the background sold every single one. And so now every time we go to a sale, we set up new Mac mannequins and we hang new stuff on the background, something different. And Jenny picked these uh, this last week for our Facebook Live because we've had these since the advent of the Carly. We got a whole bunch 
And, and they haven't all sold. They haven't sold as well as we like. Because I have a lot of them. But they are very different than the Carly's coming out today. So they still have, you know, a lot of value. They're different. They're cool. But people just don't, don't see them maybe, right? Or they glance by them. So she wore one. We put one on the mannequin. And I think she sold like three or four in that sale. So it's just, again, it's showcasing the product that you have. Put it on a mannequin. Put it behind you. Somebody's going to pop into that live sale. And they're going to see an amazing Amelia behind you or something. They're going to be like, Oh my gosh, can I see that? What area? size is what, that? What size is that? Yeah, that's, that's always the question. What size is that? Mm -hmm. And you're going to sell stuff that's behind you because it's always there. And instead of just a precursory, here's this one in extra small, it's awesome. Here's this one in extra small, it's cool. They're always chilling out there behind you, and somebody's going to take notice of them, and somebody's going to take them home. Like, I think in every live sale that we've Not done, true, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. something has sold from behind us, right? And in many cases, multiple pieces. Every time. And oftentimes, too, I think we like to, like, if we want to sell a certain product, we want to, I will put it on my body. If I have a piece that I'm holding up and um, people aren't responding much to it, I'll put it on my body. Um, so, and, and that tends to sell a lot of pieces too. So if you actually put it on your body, um, we had a couple questions. Let's see. Six outfits last week. Missy said, well, good job. I have never done outfits before and it worked really well. That's great. So outfit sales, you know, again, don't be afraid to try something new. I read a quote this week or last week and it said, never be afraid to try something new. Remember Experts built the Titanic and amateurs built the Ark with God's help, right? So I thought that was pretty cool. It's like, that's true. You know, if we set our mind on something, we're doing it for the right reason, we can absolutely accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. um, so with that in mind, another important thing, you know, if you, if you take that plunge or, or for anything that you want to do, whether it's Facebook Live or your pop-ups or whatever, again, it's just to set goals. So when Jenny and I were talking about me doing Periscope, she being the good leader that she is, she says, okay, well, what are your goals? What do you want to do, right? So I set three goals for myself um, that I was trying for for the end of May, I think is what we put on my time frame for them. And they were to have 100 followers. I fully expect that to happen within the next week because it's coming faster than I think. Again, it's sitting there on the live sale for three or four hours, you know, in those first couple times until you build up more and more of that following. You can also ask people to share your broadcast where you might pick up followers. Um, my next one, and I think this one's gonna be tough with Periscope, so I might just have to steal one of Jenny's Facebook Lives or something, nope. is to do a, a 50 piece party, right? So right now, my first one was nine, my second one was 14, and my third one, where I just had our shop the box stuff, was only two. So I don't know, I got a rough night or what. And um, he was all by himself too. And I was by myself. Um, so it shows just Jenny's good at it. I don't know. No. Because <laughs> um, I wasn't there to help get you stuff. It's, it's part of the, it, it, I think a lot of the um, Periscope shoppers are looking for the requests, right? They, they want to see what they want to see, not necessarily what you want to show. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so my 100 followers, a 50 piece party, and a new member for our team and to find a new consultant from there, right? So set some goals for yourself, you know, let them be achievable, but let them be challenging too, right? Things that, things that push you. So that's kind of, I think what I have, does anybody have any questions about Periscope or, or anything else or something that or they want to add to that? Can we talk about rules of Periscope? Like, Jenny said something about flagged words, like why mine wasn't working today is because I had the word sale in the beginning of it. Is that, why did we figure that out for sure? That's just what we were assuming. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know all the rules. So what, what we noticed was that um, Angela was doing a sale this week, and because I follow her, I saw her sale come up, and then I was watching, and she didn't have any people in there besides me. So I'm like, what's going on? is nobody else shopping LuLaRoe right now. So I went and I searched for LuLaRoe and she didn't come up and search for me. So the first one we noticed, she needed to get LuLaRoe in there. She hashtag LuLaRoe and she still didn't come up. And then I said, hey, try it in your broadcast name. And she put it in the first, first word of her broadcast name and she was at the very top of the list. And then what, six or seven people, I think came in right away, right? So that's where we learned that lesson is to keep LuLaRoe, you know, very 
uh, front of your broadcast name. And we think maybe, so uh, she did some today as well, and they had sale in the name, and I searched for sale and broadcast, and not a single thing came up, so I don't know if that's like a banned word. We'd have to contact Periscope to find out. I don't know for sure, but that's the only thing I could come up with. So that's one thing you can do, though. Have a friend. Check with one of us or whatever. Say, hey, I'm going on Periscope, and um, I'm going to sure do a sale. Will you make there? sure I'm coming up in the search feed when people search for LuLaRoe, and we'll check for you. And this is another thing that we can really do um, together as, as a team community is I think people come into a Periscope uh, broadcast when there are more people watching it, right? If there's only one or two people watching it, maybe I'll go pop in and check it. Maybe I won't. But if there's four or more is when I've noticed the numbers go from four to all of a sudden we'll have eight or 12 or more, right? They come in because they notice more people are watching it. So they think it's interesting. So if we're following each other, and we see that a broadcast comes up, just go ahead and click into it, even if you just set your phone down, because that is gonna help each other out, right? By, by letting the other customers think that there's more people in that sale, right? It's gonna seem like it's more interesting to them. So that's one way we can help each other, you know, just by, by being in those sales. Other. And if you're not doing anything and you go in there, oh my gosh, that piece is so cute. Oh my gosh, I love that print. You know, those kind and of things, that, on track, that totally fuels other, the sales. And usually our customers are doing it for us on Facebook Live and we don't have to, you know, have those comments go in. But with Periscope where we don't have that community built up at this point, you know, that's where we can kind of help each other. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Have you guys tested out music in that area? I got Facebook naughtied for my first video that I did with music in it. They're like, you don't own this music. I don't know if Periscope kind of is the same way. We haven't got dinged yet. Um, I think what they're looking for is if there's music and not a person at first, that can cause a problem. If the music's much more than what's being spoken, that can cause a problem. On Facebook? Right? What about on Periscope? Uh, we haven't had Peri any issues on Periscope. I think Art was talking about it. So, so I think also if, if it's a broadcast that they know is free, so like Pandora, where you can hear the Pandora commercials in the background, or maybe like a local radio station where you can hear the commercials, I don't think they'll ding you for that. But we haven't had any problems, and we have just been using Spotify. It hasn't been an issue. On, we usually pick it up pretty loud, but yeah. we're talking the whole time. Facebook won't post right. our, our videos, and I usually don't leave my videos up for replay shopping. Um, so I don't worry about that. I like the music up loud. So that they can hear it and feel like they're part of the you know the, the party but um if you do on facebook i would keep it low if you do have shot the replay but if for, you want to have the replay. so far for periscope i mean we've had our music on every single time and we haven't had an issue so um carla asked about checkout form so what i do oh, yeah. is i don't know if it's still it uh, I, it's okay. I just made a little paper that has the name of our checkout form on it, and it just says, you know, whatever the email address is, or not the, the, uh, the URL is, and then it's also in my profile, so that people can, they can take a screenshot of that while I'm holding it, and I also put our, the name of our Facebook group on there, right? It says Shop Lula Jennifer Larson. So if they take that, right, right there, so I hold it up so they can see it, and if they screenshot that, they're going to have our URL for our registration form, and they're also going to have Shop Blue Little Jennifer Larson. Now, we've already had several people join our Facebook group and have made purchases in our Facebook group from Periscope. coming from Periscope as mm -hmm. well, right? So we're so, gaining customers. So we're gaining customers that way from a market that we Facebook. would have never touched, mm -hmm. which is a good reason to do Periscope, right? So I just have that this same inf information. There's a little spot for you to, it says, tell us about yourself when you build your Periscope profile, but I just put this blurb in there basically. Um, and then. And something cool we'll about Periscope oh, is when you put your numbers up, it transposes your numbers for yeah. you. So you don't have to turn your screen or anything. Nothing's backwards. To you, it looks backwards, but to your followers, to your viewers, it looks normal, yeah. which is cool. So they can read the and regular Facebook numbers. Doesn't do that. They can read this stuff. It's all fine. It doesn't look backwards. Yeah. Um, there are two. Uh, a couple buttons to be aware of. So when you're first doing your broadcast, 
the default is to public, but there's a little button and if you hit it, it'll go to private, which means it just broadcasts to your followers and you can even like select certain followers in that way you could like message people or, or whatnot. And then there's also um, another little like comic bubble thing, right? Like a message bubble. And if you hit that, it will make it so that you can only see messages from your followers. So that's one we learned from one of our buddies who was telling us about Periscope. He accidentally hit that on his second sale. He's like, I was on there for three hours. And nobody said anything to me at all. It was horrible. And he's like, and then I got off and I figured out that I blocked every single person, you know, and he went back and watched the video. And anyway, so, <laughs> so those are things to watch out for. So just make sure it's going to public and the little bubble, you know, is, is available for anyone to uh, comment. All right. Any, Any other, other questions? questions? Jinx. I mean, I'm done talking. <laughs> okay, well, thanks so much, ladies. Um, oh yeah, one more thing. There's this, there's this thing that's really awesome. It's called, what else would you like with that? Right, so <laughs> especially when we're starting on Periscope and we might only have a couple sales, you know, like a night where I'm gonna sell five pieces or less or whatever. It's so worth it to me to say, can I find you some leggings to go with that? Can I find you a top to go with that? Can I find you a skirt to go with that? Something like that, right? And again, like I had an and experience. It works. Totally works. I had an experience at the gun store. Mm -hmm. A guy came in and bought a box of ammo from me. It was like 10 bucks. And I was like joking around with him. I'm like, hey, do you want anything else with that? Get your holster, you know, get you some hearing protection, AK-47. <laughs> And he's like, AK-47? Yeah, let's look at those. And we walk over to the rack, and he ends up buying a $500 rack in like 15 minutes. Right? I had another customer who, who was a very well-to-do guy, but he came in looking for a certain thing. I sold him that certain thing. What else can I show you? What else can I show you? What else can I show you? He walked out with a $14,000 bill that day just from me saying, what else can I show you? And I never stopped until he said, I'm good. Right? And so. <laughs> That's what it is. It's just ask. And if you don't ask, the answer is always no. That's the that's the golden rule of sales. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. So just ask, put it out there. Okay. Any other questions we have can answer fun. tonight? Go rock it. And don't be boring. Have fun. Just have fun. If you're having fun doing those live sales, then your customers will totally have fun with you. So just have fun, smile, joke around. I'm an idiot on half of those if you guys have watched me. What? But I don't care. Like, I just am goofy, right? And people oh, yeah. like it and they have fun. And it's all good, right? And we're buds and, you know, they end up sticking around longer and they end up finding more things they like. Yeah. So it's all good. Oh, Sales mode, right? Okay. All right, you guys, you're all amazing. We're here for you if you need anything, but thanks so much for taking time on this call tonight and uh, plan on again next week, same time, same place. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be posting some office hours for this week too, later in the week. So if you have any questions during the week, you can pop in and I'll just have Zoom open for you. So we'll just set it up like this where I'll just send you a link. I'll just post it on our team page and you can just click on the link and come on in if you have a question or want to talk. Um, I'll be here for you and anybody can just join and we can all chat. Um, so I'll post office hours. We'll have some regular times where I do that. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm always here for you. Um, so anyway, thanks. Thanks you guys. Yeah. Thanks everybody. If you guys want to find us on Periscope, I'm Lula bro Lars. Angela is Lula. Ro, is it Lula? Ro Angela law. Yeah. And then it's uh, Lularo Amanda Adams. So you can find us all there on Periscope if you want to come, come see watch. what we're doing or just come say hi or whatever. It's all good. Okay. All right, you guys. You're awesome. Thanks, everybody. We'll Have talk a good night. to you later. Have a wonderful night. Bye. Bye-bye.